Bob. Uh, great to be back with you. I went to Mount Marty first today and we met with President Benoit. Uh, Chuck and I did. And I'm glad that I went there because I would end up downtown. Uh, I didn't realize that you guys had moved here. Um, have not seen that play that you guys talked about either, but if Tom is smart, he'll do it tonight against Northwestern, right? Uh, get a quick start. Uh, like uh, Chuck said, uh, this is that grinder time of year. These games are uh, fast and furious, and uh, uh, the ratings are all uh, very, very good on the women's side especially. Um, you know, we're just in the top ten alone, very, very top-heavy in the NAIA. And, you know, five teams to the national tournament seems like a real reality again for the women's side and maybe even an outside sixth team, which would be real, uh, real special if that could happen. There have been some changes in the NAIA, especially in Division II for basketball. Um, we lost the Sunrise Conference out of Maine. The entire league actually de-emphasized athletics and went away from it altogether um, just to change a little bit of their identity, except for a one school, uh, Fisher, that did decide to stay, and they moved on to another conference. But uh, you're exactly right. So there's been a lot of movement, although I think maybe the, the tide is probably slowing down a little bit. Um, just from what I hear around the country, I think things are starting to settle in and people have maybe made those moves and uh, seem to be happy where they're at. The NAIA has really made a, a, an effort to uh, rebrand itself, and I don't want to say rebrand itself, but uh, re-emphasize re what they do well and they do a lot of things well and I think our schools have made that, I know our schools are committed to the NAIA way. Uh, through the champions of character, obviously, but just the level of competition that we play, we still feel it fits our, our needs very, very well. So uh, GPAC is uh, doing well. We're in our 12th year now, started in 2000. I've told you that before. Um, it's, it's been a fun year so far, just kind of sitting in the now a little bit, uh, talking about Mount Marty being at Briar Cliff on Saturday. Um, it was Ray Nackey Day. Um, everybody kind of remembers Ray Nackey. Uh, they dedicated the court uh, to him. Uh, it'll be Ray Nackey Court at the Newman Flanagan Center. So they had a lot of his former players back. Uh, weather didn't cooperate maybe quite the way they wanted to, but it was a really nice ceremony and honoring Ray on, uh, on Saturday in Sioux City. Uh, we are into the final two weeks of basketball. Uh, this, Saturday, or this Saturday is the second to last Saturday of the year, and then uh, we'll have tournament time. And I was talking to Chuck this morning, and I kind of was picking his brain. This was a double round robin year. Uh, we played everybody twice, straight up, uh, home and away, and I asked him what he thought, and he loved it, and I would have to agree, I think it's been really, really good for the league. It's, it's nice to not have that call about, I didn't, we didn't have to go to Hastings, or we had to go to Hastings, and they didn't have to go to Hastings, you know, those types of calls, doesn't matter. You're going to be home and away, and um, if you can survive it, uh, you're going to be the true champion, and right now, the Dort men um, are playing phenomenal basketball, probably one of the best Dort men's teams they've ever had. Uh, probably dating back to the 1988, you know, years of Greg Van Solen. Um, they're at 23 wins already. I think they're 23 and three right now, um, and they're just uh, playing well. And they they do have a tough test tonight. They'll have to go to the Corn Palace. And uh, it's funny you mentioned Coach Munson. I can always remember going to the Corn Palace when I was at Dort, and we would walk in, and Munson would be doing practice, and he would ratchet it up just a little bit higher when he had a crowd. And uh, I always wondered how those guys could even play for him. But I think it was a little more show than it was. But at the end of the day, you'd always see Mitchell High right there at the uh, state tournament, and they always did well. So, um, But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a fun year to watch these teams duke it out. Um, in terms of who, who will end out on top. And on the women's side, uh, Concordia leads the league right now. They're number two in the country. And, you know, we don't have Sioux Falls in the mix this year, but I can only imagine what it would have been if we had Sioux Falls in the mix. It would have been really a crazy race this year because uh, they continue to play pretty well even in their transition year uh, at Division Two. But uh, Concordia's got a big game tonight. They're at Briar Cliff, so that's going to tell a lot about where, where that goes uh, in terms of the standings. We'll see. Uh, if Concordia can get that big road win, they did beat Briar Cliff at Concordia earlier in the year. This game here tonight for the women, as Chuck said, is very, very important. And uh, Mount Marty needs a couple of wins here, maybe to get into that at-large spot. So hopefully that's something that we'll see how it plays out. But it would be great to get Mount Marty back to the national tournament. Uh, they always draw very well. and. And uh, it, it's, have, it's, it's always nice to have the, the Yankton folks there. The national tournament is coming up again in Sioux City for the women. It's going to be the 15th year that Sioux City has hosted it. 
Uh, it's been quite a run uh, for Sioux City. It's the 20, 21st year of the Division II tournament. So it's been 21 years now since the split between D1 and D2. Uh, that happened in 1992. Um, and there's actually a lot of talk in the NAI right now about going back to one division in basketball. I would say precipitated probably by some of the loss of membership. Uh, we're just under 300 total institutions now. I'm actually on that committee that's looking at that, and I would say right now that's kind of at a standstill. Uh, obviously, there's probably arguments on both sides of the ledger, but uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to the scholarships and it comes down to the type of athletes. And you know, I think we definitely have our brand of athletes, and Division One definitely has their brand of athletes. And right now, I still think the split is healthy and. Until uh, obviously they would have to come down from their 11 scholarships or we'd have to go up from our six and both are probably problematic on both sides of the ledger. So I don't know uh, where that will end up but uh, we, we just got an email that we're going to convene our task force again and I think going to convention looking for feedback from the ADs and coaches that are at convention in California here in April. But uh, at this point uh, the NAI has had a real nice year. Uh, the football championship had a way different look this year, obviously, with uh, Sioux Falls not in the mix. But uh, St. Xavier out of Chicago won it. Uh, first ever title for them. It was really a, a fun thing to see them. They knocked off Mighty Carroll. Uh, Carroll was back in the final. And uh, it was, uh, you know, our, our teams probably didn't quite have the year that we were used to in the G Pack. Morningside made the playoffs, they were the only one. Uh, they did lose at home in the first round. Uh, they lost to St. Francis out of Illinois. So, uh, you know, that said, on the national scene, maybe we were a little disappointed with how football went, but in the inside of the GPAC, it was a really fun year. Uh, we had uh, Doan and Northwestern and Morningside kind of all vying for that championship this year, and it was a lot of fun to see those guys play it out. And, you know, there's kind of this renewed, fresh breath of everybody had a chance this year and uh, saw some great games along the way. Only nine games for the first time uh, in the GPAC, uh, so everybody played some non-conference, which was, uh, was great. Dakota State ended up, I think, on eight schedules this year. Um, so we saw a lot of Dakota State, and I think, uh, I think we ran the table against Dakota State this year in the GPAC uh, with all our teams. So uh, that was uh, a, a good thing for our teams to do that. And then we played a lot of teams down south as well, in the heart of America and the KCAC. And I think that helped us in the ratings a little bit early on, although as the, later in the year, I think we kind of started knocking each other off, and, and the ratings kind of fell for us a little bit. And, Probably the big loss early was that Nebraska Wesleyan upset Morningside in Sioux City, and that kind of set the tone. It, it knocked us off that top five, six spot there, and we really never recovered. So we're looking forward to next year in football, hopefully maybe getting back to two teams into the playoffs. Um, we're, uh, we're gearing up for indoor track at the Devaney Center again. Always, uh, always fun to go to Nebraska. I know Randy's excited about it. And, uh, I think this is our fourth or fifth year in a row now that we've gone to Nebraska, which has always been a fun thing for the league because uh, you get them in a Division I facility and you can't beat the Devaney Center. It's top notch and it's like a national meet for our kids and we get to see all those guys and, and gals compete there. Nebraska is actually uh, going to be another site that we'll have for baseball this year. Uh, Haymarket Park uh, for, for the Huskers there, that's going to be our baseball tournament. So we're looking forward to going to Lincoln. We're going to use Sherman Field as well, so uh, for Andy, it's Destination Lincoln for the conference tournament this year, and uh, Nebraska Wesleyan is going to host that. And Nebraska Wesleyan is hosting a lot of our championships this year. They had cross country, they have indoor track, they have outdoor track as well on a new surface there, and they're going to have the baseball tournament. So a lot of time in Lincoln this year uh, for our teams. But uh, we're at 11 teams in the conference this year. We've kind of weathered the storm of the changes. We knew Sioux Falls was coming. We had two years to prepare for that. Obviously still didn't know about the whole Dana thing when that happened, but uh, we've recovered. I think our schedules are really solid right now. Uh, we're coming out of uh, year one of our new two-year schedules with 11, and I think looking forward, we're going to keep those rotations going, which is always something nice to have where you can keep some consistency from year to year, especially in those home and aways, and you don't get caught going to various uh, places back-to-back uh, -back years. We were having a discussion this morning about that basketball schedule being double round robin, and one of the nice things that's come out of it is you get to see every team every year now, and I think for some of our teams, they never had an identity with, a, say, a Hastings or a Doan or a Nebraska Wesleyan because maybe they'd only come here once every third year or fourth year, and now you're going to see them every year. So I think that that may help solidify our conference, at least in branding, that they are in our conference and we're all in this uh, one big group. So 
you know, baseball, we will we'll still play single round robin. We're down to 20 games this year, which is still plenty. Um, you know, I think it's a good, good uh, group of games. I wouldn't probably want to go much lower than that. I know we've talked about that as a league, whether we should look at more games, maybe going three games a set or four even. But uh, right now we'll stay at 20 just because of our weather. I think we're a little nervous to pull the trigger on changing that. And softball will be the same deal as well. But, you know, the, the league is still strong, as you alluded to. We're still one of the largest conferences in the NAIA. Uh, we have a real strong core group of schools that are committed to the mission of what we're about. And, uh, you know, that's academic and athletic excellence. That's what we're about. And um, we've got a lot of administrators that have been around. We, we've seen some new faces in the league. It's been, it's been good to have new blood. And uh, we've had a couple new athletic directors. And, you know, we see some new coaches. But not so much maybe on the basketball side. There's a lot of old familiar faces out there yet. And, uh, and uh, very, very competitive. So that's just kind of an overview of where the conference is at. Uh, you know, not a lot of new things to report, per se, uh, in the league. Uh, we did redo our website this past summer. Uh, it was probably much needed. Uh, it had been about five years since we redid it, and you know, we're getting a lot of traffic uh, to that website, which tells me there's a lot of interest in the GPAC. I was looking at some numbers for a one-month period of uh, February 1 to March 1 last year, which we'd be in right now. We had right around 50,000 people come through the website, which is really, really good numbers and high interest. And uh, obviously, basketball ends in there. The con our conference tournament starts, indoor track championships in there, and then the national tournament pairings come out. So this is, uh, this is always that fun time of year. And uh, just per on a personal note about me, um, I did step down recently as the tournament director in Sioux City for the NAI D2 Basketball Tournament. Uh, it's a position I did for five years. I've been on the committee since the beginning. I'm actually moving over to the national side now, and I'll be on the national tournament committee. I'm looking forward to probably wearing more of a conference hat at the national tournament, uh, and I'll be a part of uh, the committee there. So a new role should be a new challenge, and I look forward to that uh, in Sioux City this year. So.